Hello and welcome to the Thursday, January 18th, 2018 edition of the Science Internet Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. A lot of malicious emails luckily do get caught in spam filters before the user ever gets to see them. Now, a few years ago, I remember one organization where they actually had a major breach because a user went into their spam folder and retrieved an email that turned out to be malicious. Now, Brad found an interesting email in his spam filter. In this particular case, one of the interesting artifacts here was that the email, in addition to a malicious Word document, also included prior correspondence. So this looks like one part of that conversation was infected and then the malware, as it often does, spreads to other people that were in contact with that person, but in this case also included prior messages to to make their email more plausible. Well, still got caught in the spam filter. If the user would have opened the document, then of course they would have been in trouble in particular if they enabled macros in Word. Brad is going through the actual malware here. He doesn't share the actual email message in this case because it did include personal communications between those two individuals, but all the malware and such, of course, including hashes and various uh, connection IP addresses and certificates are part of his diary. Probably everybody listening to this podcast has replaced a USB key at some point and hopefully it wasn't an important one, but there are now several manufacturers that offer various varieties of secure USB keys. Some of them with biometric or pin lock sort of built in to the key. Question is always how secure are these keys really? And there was a good talk last August at Black Hat about how to audit these keys and the authors of this talk have now made the talk alive and also wrote a blog about how to actually get into some of these secure keys. What they essentially did was disassemble these keys, looked for things like, for example, simple unlock commands that are being sent from the fingerprint scanner to the actual key. And in order to do that, of course, they first have to disassemble it. And in this case, they're showing you how to do this. It's not uh, all that easy, of course. You have to remove epoxy in some cases, unsolder the chips, and then solder them to other boards in order to read out their content. But if you haven't seen their Black Hat talk yet, I highly recommend that you take a look in particular if you're thinking about purchasing a large number of uh, encrypted USB keys, for example, for your company. And apparently there is yet another message going around that will crash iMessage and various other OS X and iOS applications. In some cases, it apparently is able to also freeze up the system. In this particular case, the culprit appears to be the OpenCraft title attack. OpenCraft hacks are attacks that you can add to web pages in order to identify the web page to social media. So if someone shares an article on your site, it will automatically display the correct title for this particular page. We're using them on our site as well, and usually they don't cause any problems, but in this particular case, they're leading to this crash in iMessage. The sample page was hosted on GitHub. That page is gone now, but of course the bug still exists and it's just a matter for someone to set up a new page. Just receiving the message without any clicks or any user interaction will cause the crash. Now, there's not much you can do about it at this point. If you notice a particular site being used in these attacks, you could limit access to the site via your adult content filter on iOS. And talking about denial of service vulnerability, the Internet Systems Corporation, the other ISC, also released a new version of the name server Bind. This fixes a denial of service vulnerability that can cause Bind to crash. This denial of service vulnerability is related to DNSSEC. So as an 
quick fix. You could just disable DNSSEC validation. And well, if you're not doing DNSSEC validation anyway, then you may not be affected by this vulnerability. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.